Hey y'all, here is Cold Shot by Steve Ray Vaughan. But you gotta detune a half step to play Steve Ray Vaughan stuff. Almost all of it. Same thing with Jimi Hendrix, Guns N' Roses, Van Halen. So anyway, here is Cold Shot by Steve Ray Vaughan. We're starting with an A minor chord right here. We got five, five, and five with that first finger. So think about like a one, two, three, four, and. So we're starting with an upbeat on the and of four. And it's kind of got a swing kind of feel to it too. So. We're gonna have like two, three, four. So it has some, you're doing some chicks on those, you're trying to mute those strings to get percussive effects for more groove coming out of that. So two, three, four. And then you're hitting the five and the seven on the D string, so. Now that's all those sevens down here on the bottom three strings to so all three of those fives, so. And he's even, you could be like hitting like open strings even as he's going to the different notes. It's kind of how dirty you want to make it, you know, so if you want to make it kind of cleaner. Of course, you don't want it too clean. And then when the verse starts, he kind of hits that one hard. And then bam, bam, bam. Make sure you hit that one real hard. And then you're going to come up to... So more than the like... This one really has a bum, 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 dee da bum, bum, bum. So it's kind of more relying on that note there than we did down here. So bum, 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 dee da bum, 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 dee da. And then it kind of hits on that A bass. I think when you get into kind of the chorus there, he kind of uses that bass note more than he did, it was choppier on the verse. Let's go in that stop. Walking out anyway. Two, three, and. Could even just skip a chord getting back there. Dun, dun, dun. And that's your E7 sharp nine. You got the big E seven six seven eight. Let's say bam, bam, we're going into that D minor. That's what we had up here on this 12th fret. You know, this is basically A minor position. This is D minor position up here. That's the four chord, so a very standard thing to do in a blues song. So. E. to kind of ringing out that five. Now when he gets into a little solo kind of thing, there's a couple things you can do here. You can play this little five here, and you know this This is a very common bend note in that blues scale, right? E, a minor pentatonic going on there. So you could be like a... That kind of thing. So he's bending while holding this five down here. And he's using this five here so he can make different notes going on here. So it's a two string type thing. And I don't know whether he finger picked a thing like that or hybrid picked it with a pick and a finger or if he just did it with his pick. You know what I mean? Like, Because if you put that string in the middle in there too and make it a three string thing, it still sounds pretty good. Like, so that kind of stuff basically. You could also get into the we have the two sevens on the second string and you get that finger flattened down to it. That kind of stuff. So you got and whatever your 
you know, not, I'm not going to get into the specifics of what his solo one was doing, but you got all that kind of uh, pentatonic type stuff. He gets up in here, you know, using some of those higher notes and things. But basically, if you want to get into that little melody of, which matches the verse melody. I was sorry, you know, that kind of thing. So anyway, that's basically the gist of Cold Shot by Steve Ray Vaughan. And uh, much more Steve Ray Vaughan coming up. Please like and subscribe if you dig it. Alright, here's another Stevie Ray lesson. This is going to be on tightrope. Now, I suggest starting this first riff out like this E major triad here. Two on the D string, one and four on the G string. Now, the reason being is because we're going to try to settle into this B7-9 chord here after a quick second. And that's a D major triad. O to four in the D string to two on the G string. I'll do a little hammer on in there. It kind of makes it quick. And then B7. So that's two, one, two, open two. And later we're going to get into a B7-9 where we bar those twos on the bottom. Now you could also play this up here if you want to go. Seven, six, nine. And that's seven on the A and then six, nine on the D. Down a whole step to the five, four, seven. And then down to this B7. But if you do it down here, then you're in the same position already. And then A power chord, G note on the big string with a little bend on it to the open E, to the little E. And then we got a bend up and down and pull off, and then a pull off on the D string there. So that was two up and down on the G string, pulling off to the open, two to open on the D string. So. again. And now we're getting into the verse. Bass, bass, and then we got that 7-9 chord. 2-1, two, 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So that's boom, boom. Down, up, down, up, down, up, with some chicks in between. And then after about, I believe it's like seven of those when he starts singing, you're going to have a, and that's an A flat minor, four, six, six, four, 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 full bar chord on that four. And then you're going to go to this E seven, nine chord, so that's seven, six, seven, seven, seven. And then we come back to the riff. Next verse. Now what's happening there is there's a lot of staccato chords, so that's where you want to be able to stop that chord with this left hand over here just by bringing up the pressure. You don't bring your fingers off the string, but you just, you're not pressing against the neck anymore, and you hold everything tight, it can make that chord go away just with that hand right there. So each time I'm doing one of those chords, it's a quick one. It's a staccato chord. It's not lingering, you know, so that's why it's so tight and kind of syncopated sounding. And then at the end of that, when you get back to that A flat minor to the E7-9, and then this time we're going to do riff, and then the riff again. And once again, that was two, one, four, oh, four, two, or it could be seven, six, nine, five, four, seven. So the B7 or B7, nine chord. Kind of seems like he's doing a B7 before he gets to the verse, and then the verse, it's got a little different ring to it with that down there. It sounds like, that, that's what it sounds like to me. Then we do it again. 
So what we're doing is we're going up to the four chord from that B, that's that E7-9. So you could, if you have, if you feel like you have time, you get that little riff in there right before that new measure starts. So be... Same kind of thing. Down to the two, the B. And back to the seventh fret bass note. Now this time, A, A major there. You could do it up here if you want, the fifth fret. Back to the E7-9, and then we hit the B7-9, which is this one, and we stop when he starts a little solo thing. So he goes, quick hammer to the ninth fret from the seventh on the A string, and that's that seven to nine back and forth. Seven, nine, seven, and he bends that ninth fret up and down, goes to the seventh. So it's like, Down to two. Back to seven. And then A to the back to this chord. And stop on the two. Something like that. He gets into some interesting things later in the solo. Um, it goes up two frets with it. He also gets into some, of course he gets up into this higher position here. Um, he does a, when you want to hit that really high note, that's the root note of your key. So that's a B way up there. That's the 19th fret. So he gets one of those going. Some of those fast kind of pull-offs. That's kind of a cool blues lick. And if you're doing a thing like a, you might go ahead and use more than, more than just that one string at a time. Stuff like that. So anyway, that's um, that's Tightrope, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hey folks, here goes a lesson on Stevie Ray Vaughan's Lenny. So it's going to start out with this tricky little chord here. Six on the D string, and eight, and then nine and nine barred. Now he starts out with a seven on the bass up here. So the A string is muted, so you have 7, then muted A, and then you have 6, 8, 9, 9. So first you play that chord, and then you come up here and play this E6 chord. Now that's 12 on the big string, again the A is muted, and 11 here, and 13 with your pinky, and 12 with your ring finger. So that's 12, muted, and 11, 13, 12. So that's our first two chords. And then you're going big E, and then the two harmonics on the bottom strings on the 12th fret. So all together we got. Then he's got a little riff. He's gonna slide his ring finger into this ninth fret, to the seventh fret of the A string, so. And then he slides that ring finger from the 9 to the 11 on the A string, so to the 9, 7, 9 to 11, quick slide again to this 9 on the D string, and he gets into a little thing. Now if you get this finger on that little hammer-on pull-off, if you play the second string at the same time with that little bar right there, if you get that finger tall enough, you'll hear all those notes ringing out. You won't mute that one on the bottom with that finger on accident. That was a big part of Jimi Hendrix's style, how he could make chords sound extra special with having all these... That kind of stuff. So Stevie Ray definitely learned from that, and he's, he's employing that to a good degree on this tune. So we got... So that first one... Now later you could do stuff like... All kind of manner of different things, and he did all kind of different Im improvisations on all that stuff. So one more time with that intro. Open E. 
Now to that chord, but with, without that seven on the bass. And then we have a little riff here. So that's seven on the bottom. Quick hammer, not seven to nine on the B string. And then seven to the nine on the G string. So you get a little, a little vibrato on that ninth fret because you're holding on to it for a second. Now here we're doing the A6, the same shape we did up here. So it's five, muted A, and then four, and six, five. And then we're gonna do a... Same type of thing. Now in the third time of that, you're gonna go, you're gonna arpeggiate this chord by going, and that's the biggest string you're playing, down to the fourth string, down the second string, the third string. So bum, 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 bum. And get used to that because a lot of that's going to happen. So we got. One more time, walk up. this time, and then everything up one fret, so A sharp or B flat six there, so that was, so kind of double hit that bass, you wait a little bit before you hit that whole chord. And that was biggest to the second string, third string. Slide that 7 up to 10, same chord, same type of picking, down to the 3rd fret, G6, up to the 6th fret, slide everything down one. So at the end, just like a 9, and then to the 7, and then a little trill there, we get back into it. Now if we want to get that whammy bar involved, check out what he's got going here. kind of need a finger to reach the picking, but you need some finger. I don't know if he's using just his pinky or if he had a couple fingers down there for that, how exactly if he held it like this and had it in his hand when he's doing it. I'm not really sure. Check out that Live at Elmo combo for sure. A uh, great version of Stevie Ray doing Lenny Live back in the early 80s. Let's look at that um, whammy bar stuff again. I'm going to use my pinky to kind of hold it in place so I can reach the picking too. See, so like slowly kind of dive on that. And he would change up that chord a little bit. He would make it some fancy thing. He'd hit some of those high 12 sometimes. So he mixed it up a lot, so definitely listen to his you know, versions of that and get, get ideas. But that's your basic thing. Like I said, we got this. First chord has that seven, and we go up to the 12. We got big open, little harmonics. And what you're doing with that whammy bar is you're kind of doing just like a, you need to get your whammy bar where it doesn't have a lot of, like this isn't quite perfectly set up. It has a little bit of leeway in it. But at least it doesn't have too much where it takes you a long time to get to where you're moving the whammy bar. So you want it where you can really go up and down in kind of equal measure to keep keep it on the chord. So it still kind of sounds like in tune, 
but you're just giving it a good vibration, you know. Definitely take some practice to get used to the trying to pick with that whammy bar in your hands. So then he starts soloing over these chords. It's basically like an E to A progression. And he's pretty free since there's just a bass playing behind him to kind of go off and get into some... Like he gets into, you know, minor pentatonic stuff, a little flat fifth stuff. So definitely check it out. Uh, Lenny, Stevie Ray Vaughan, kind of the basic stuff to get you going. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Damon Wood. Please like and subscribe. I got more Stevie Ray on the way. Thanks a lot.